Hello and welcome to chapter 4 statistics fans. We're going to be looking at designing studies. In chapter 4.1 we'll deal with samples and surveys. So these are all the things we should be able to do in this, uh, in this section. So you should be able to identify the population and then a sample in a statistics study. We're going to look at a type of sampling. We're going to look at voluntary response samples as well as convenience samples. I'll let you know ahead of time those are bad. Um, and explain how they, because they can lead to bias. Um, we're also going to obtain, uh, describe how to obtain a, a random sample using slips of paper, technology, so we have your TI Inspire ready, uh, or a table of random digits, which is table D uh, in the statistics uh, formulas and charts. We'll distinguish a simple random sample, otherwise known as an SRS. Uh, the, the difference between that and a stratified random and a cluster sample. And then we'll look at undercoverage, non-response, question wording uh, uh, that can lead to bias. All right, we've got to define some vocabulary words then as we get going. Uh, so. Uh, three of the words we're going to look at are population, census, and sample. The population uh, in a statistical study is the entire group of individuals that we want to find information about. A census will collect data from every individual in the population. Uh, so this, this definition is actually changing a little bit. Um, but a true census does ask everybody in the population, though the census we do in the United States every 10 years is really truly not a census because we do not uh, get data from every individual in the population, but we do attempt to get data from every individual in the population. And then a sample is just a subset of the individuals in the population from which we actually collect data. So let's illustrate this. We've got a population. We're going to take a little sample of that group collect data from a representative sample, and then come back and make an inference about the population. So, the idea of a sample survey is that we often draw conclusions about a whole population on the basis of that sample. You're seeing that now uh, with election polling. Uh, election polling doesn't certainly ask everybody in the population, but they do a very strategic sample of that so they can draw conclusions about what the whole population will do. And choosing that sample from a large, varied population is not that easy. In order to do so, step one, you need to define the population you want to describe. So you need to define that population. Say exactly what you want to measure. Exactly what you want to measure. And a sample survey is a study that uses an organized plan to choose a sample that represents some specific population. And then step three, we decide how to choose a sample from the population. Well, let's start with some bad ways. There are a number of different methods to select samples. And one of the bad ways is to choose individuals from a population who are easy to reach. Uh, that is what's called a convenience sample. That would just be me standing out in front of a grocery store and asking people's opinions uh, about a certain topic. It's just convenient. Or maybe just asking the class uh, what their opinions are. That's convenient. The group is in front of me. I don't have to do a lot of work. It's convenient. But it does have some incredible issues with that because it's really not a representative sample. So why? Well, the design of a statistical study shows bias if it would consistently underestimate or consistently overestimate the value you want to know. If I was asking kids about the value of an AP class and I just asked the AP statistics class, I'd probably get an overestimate of the value of an AP class. So again, always look at uh, the group that is being studied. Um, and if I'm just asking it out of convenience or something that's easy to reach, not good. So they're almost guaranteed to show bias. 
So another type is what's called the voluntary response samples, in which people decide whether to join the sample and response journal invitation. Some of those things might just be phone calls or an internet survey that you choose to respond to, um, or um, you know maybe it's a phone survey as well too. Okay. Uh, so the, the, the voluntary response sample consists of people who choose themselves, again, choose themselves by responding to a general invitation. Voluntary response samples show bias because people with only strong opinions, often in the same direction, are most likely to respond. So again, when you have those television call-in uh, uh, polls, uh, only people that feel strongly are going to generally call in. Um, so those results can be skewed. Uh, those directions. So how do we sample well? Well, a sample chosen by chance uh, rules out both favoritism by the sampler and the self-selection by respondents. Random sampling is the best way to do that. And that involves using a chance process to determine which members of a population are included in the sample. So a simple random sample, we'll start abbreviating that as SRS, so our simple random sample, is chosen in such a way that every group of so many individuals in the population has an equal chance to be selected as a sample. So in practice, people use random numbers generated by a computer or a calculator to choose samples. And if you don't have technology handy, you can use slips of paper. Um, you can even use a table of random digits. And that's what we're going to demonstrate here. So uh, then the video what I'll do is I'll do a little demonstration of where you can do this on your technology on your on your TI Inspire calculator. But what you're going to have to do is give each individual population a distinct numerical label from one to n. You know, so uh, if I was rolling a die, wanted to simulate rolling a die on a calculator, uh, I would give every you know the results are simply one uh, one to six. So they would be either a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, or a 6. And I'll show how to do that in the calculator. Um, since that was so it'll be a random number generator to obtain so many numbers uh, from 1 to n. So stay tuned to the end of the video for that. Using a table D, what you're going to do is you give each member of the population a numerical label with the same number of digits the same number of digits. So if I was going to assign something from say uh, 1 to 10, I would have each of those be two digits long because 10 has two digits to it. So I'd assign it as 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4, 0, 5, 0, 6, 0, 7, 0, 8, 0, 9, and then 10 because each of these uh, then would have two digits to them. That is very, very important when we're using table D. Uh, uh, that's in the formula packets for the AP exam. And then obviously use as few digits as possible. We don't want to go 001002003 and use three digits for that when the maximum number of digits of the numbers is two. And then again, we want to be able to randomize. So what we're going to do is we're going to read consecutive groups of digits the appropriate length from left to right across a line in table D. You're going to ignore any groups of digits that wasn't used as a label, that wasn't used as a label, or that are duplicates. And then stop when you've chosen the so many different values you have. All right. Let's take a look. So we want to be able to use table D, and then we're going to use line 130 to choose an SRS of four different hotels. So what we've done is we've gone through, and each of the different hotels have been assigned a two-digit number because there are a total of 28 different hotels in here. I'd only have to use two digits, but again, each one's going to have to have two digits for their hotel. This is line 130 down here from table D. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, and again, the table is divided just into groups of five numbers just for ease of reading. Um, so when we group two numbers, uh, together, we're going to have to kind of connect them together. So, <clears throat> as I read through, uh, you know, I'll take the 6, 9, 69 there, 0, 5, and then the 1, 6 becomes 16, 48, 17, etc., etc. So, 
Those are the group of two-digit numbers as I read from left to right. And then I want to choose four hotels, but my answer is only between 0, 1, and 28. So as I go through, I'm not going to use the 69 because it's not in here. Well, 5 certainly is. That's Beach Castle. 16 certainly is. That's the Radisson. 48 is not in that group. 17 is the Ramada. 87 is not in the group. And then 17 is just a repeat. 40, 95 are not in the group. 17 is a repeat. These are not between 1 and 28. And then there is our last one at 20. So our SRS of four hotels for the editors to contact is the Beach Castle, Radisson, Ramada, and the Sea Club. All right, what I'm going to do is do a little bit with the uh, uh, calculator then to show you how you can use the calculator uh, for this and what you would do to create a random digit. Let's just pretend we're doing the rolling the, of the die. So uh, I would go to menu. Oops, sorry. Got to first uh, be able to go into the calculator. Uh, so go to the calculator and then menu. And this is actually we're going to start going to a little different menu rather than statistics. Uh, we're going to go to probability. And then we're going to slide over from probability uh, to random. And we're just going to go a random integer. So it'll be random int. Now a, a six-sided die has six faces. Uh, it is from one, and then we'll go comma, oops, and then six, and then finish out the parentheses. So when I press enter, this, and I continue to press enter, that's just going to give me the roll of one die. And I got a five in the first one, a one in the second one, a three in the third one. I can also do this. I can go menu, probability, random, random integer, and then go one comma six, and let's just say I'm going to roll two dice, comma two, and show the parentheses, and there I've got a listing of two dice. I rolled a six and a two, and a five and a six, and a two and a three. So those are some of the basics you can do uh, with our calculator. We'll explore a little bit more as we go on. Um, but that should give you a general idea on how you can use technology uh, as well. Um, here you wouldn't have to worry about two digits uh, for like the last problem if I was doing those 28 different hotels. Again, I go menu, probability, random, integer, and I can just go 1, 28. And if I wanted four hotels, I got an issue with that because sometimes what might happen is I might get a repeat like I did right here. We got one and one, so I really only have three hotels. So I think sometimes it might be better just to go menu, probability, random, integer, and just go the one comma 28. And then this will just give me the ability to ignore as I go along. So there's hotel 16, 24, 28, and eight. Uh, so I've got my four hotels uh, rather than taking the chance of getting a repeat uh, within there. All right, well, what you should be able to do is you should be able to do this first assignment uh, from section 4.1, numbers 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and 11. And we're going to have a nice fresh start to make sure we're doing all our homework. And we'll see you on day two of lesson 4.1 in the next video. All right, see you then.